Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and gays. From gutters to gay bars and everywhere in between. Here to finish off your Tuesday, it's your three besties, two brunettes and a gay. Welcome back, everyone, and happy Tuesday. It is Deanna. Celeste. And your favourite gay, Aaron. Celeste, how was your long weekend? Oh, look, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it goes so quick. It's a long weekend, but I feel like it's shorter than most. Mm. Yeah, because I feel... Do you feel like it's because we're too ambitious, like try to pack too much into a long weekend, or you just have this perception that you have, like, heaps more time than what you have? Well, I feel like in the first couple days you take it easy because you're like, I've got an extra day. And then it comes Monday and you're like, oh, well, it's basically over now. And you just start preparing for the week. Mm. Unless you're away. I feel like if you're away for a long weekend, it's really good. When I'm at home, it's, it's harder. Yeah, I agree. And then you've got a short week. So then it's Tuesday and you think it's Monday and you're all confused. And, <laughs> and it's already Friday before I know it. Don't Tuesday suck after a long weekend. Oh, my God. It feels like a Monday. It does. Because Ch- normally Tuesday. Choose- and a Tuesday all crammed into one. Because <laughs> normally a Tuesday doesn't have a vibe to it, really. No, it's, well, I mean... Monday like, has a vibe. Tuesday doesn't. I feel quite productive on a Tuesday because Monday's a bit frazzled, like, you know, sort your, your shit out, get your head in the game kind yeah. of the thing. And then, like, Tuesday, you're like, okay, cool, I know what to, I need to do. Yeah. By Wednesday, like, the end of the day, you're like, oh, is it Friday? You know, so Tuesday... But Tuesday's after a long weekend. Hectic. How you choose gay on Tuesday. That's why we choose gay on... That's why the show is hectic, because it's why, a Tuesday. Why well, choose gay any day? <laughs> you choose gay every day. Every day. Every any day, day and every day. We, every day. we only choose gay on Tuesday. That's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> How was your long weekend, Aaron? Well, do you know what? I actually had a very civilised weekend for me. Oh, what does that entail? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, not civilised in your eyes, probably, but for me it was a pretty civilised uh, long weekend. I actually didn't have any real plans booked. So I kind of just went with the flow, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, On Saturday night, I went to a a, a gin um, night party in the city, which was fabulous. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Mark and I decided to get a bit homely. Homely. So yesterday I got a bit of uh, what they call it green thumbing in. Mm. (laughs) You did a bit of nesting. (laughs) You did gardening. A bit of green thumbing. Like green. (laughs) That's what it, you, you were that a what green you thumb. Have? I have a green thumb, you or were, I do a bit of you green had thumbing. A green thumb. <laughs> you were. Something to do with green and something. Thumbs. David, was this like? Is it green thumb? Green thumb. thumb. Thank you for that, David. So I got, I got a green thumb in. Yeah, yesterday. (laughs) That doesn't sound right. I think you You are a green green thumb. I was a green thumb thumb yesterday. Yeah. So I did. You just did some gardening. Did some gardening. You're at green thumb status. (laughs) I just did some weeding, to be honest, (laughs) and watering some plants. But no, we decided to get a bit homely and sort of, given it's you know end of financial year, we thought we'd go and do a bit of shopping. No, good time. Topping up on you know all the essentials that you need around the house and some fresh bits and pieces and um something really grinded my gears i have to say oh do you want to tell us about it i will tell you about it right after the break well we were very lucky enough to have a very fabulous long weekend this weekend just gone all thanks to mr uh, king charles the third Oh, is, is, oh, is it Mr. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking he, about? Actually, is it his actual birthday? No, no it's, it's not. Uh, a birthday is observed. Well, like, so different states observe the, a public holiday for a royal birthday on different dates. Oh. Some I don't know which states have the same date as us, um, but I know like when I lived in the Gold Coast, yeah. they used to observe it in May. Really? Yeah. So they just pick and choose when they They observe a birthday. We'll just, this is where we feel like we're going to have a public holiday (laughs) for the king's birthday. But I don't know when his actual birthday is. So odd. (laughs) So odd. Well, happy birthday anyway, King Charles. Yes, happy birthday. King Charlie. Um, But uh, but so this weekend, as I mentioned before the break, I actually had a very civilised weekend with my hubby. I did some life work, yeah. Mm. Life admin. Life admin, that's the one. So yeah, so I went shopping on the weekend and uh, thought we'd top up on, you know, some towels and some bed linen. And uh, we went into one particular store and <laughs> you know what it's like with the sales, right? So they put all these signs up saying 50% off, 40% off, whatever. And so I just look for the – I go straight for the 50% or more off because I think, wow, I'm going to get a good deal here, <laughs> right? So I was <laughs> – we're looking in the shop 
And all of a sudden, <laughs> we got to the counter. She rang it up. It was over five hundred dollars. Ooh, nice! And I was like, "Oh, I wasn't prepared for that." I'm like, "Okay, well, we'll just suck it up and look. We've got some." But fresh, where were you shopping? Fresh stuff. Oh, I, won't, I won't tell you the store's name. Okay. Well, it was. Was it good quality stuff? We're talking good quality stuff. And did you get a so. bunch of it? I got a bunch of it. So look, it's gonna last me, right? Exactly. Exactly. And I like things to look nice around the house. Yeah. Like I love a good quilt cover set, love all that stuff. (laughs) This is what really grinds my gears with shops these days. So (laughs) she turns around and she goes, Now, we don't actually have any bags, um, but you can buy a reusable bag for three dollars fifty. Oh and Mm. I was I was so annoyed because you know, I'd already spent over five hundred bucks on this stuff. And then I had to fork out an extra three dollars fifty. I think that's taken the piss a little bit, to be honest. I think she should have chucked the bag in. I did, and the thing is, though, the recyclable bag was crap. It's like an old lady bag. <laughs> do you, you know, girls want it? <laughs> well, this is the thing, though, is that at what point in time do you add another dollar, two dollars, three dollars for a recyclable bag at these shops now, and then you end up with all these recyclable bags that you have to throw out anyway? Exactly. Yeah. But don't you think, like, I mean, it's a bit of a liberty to ask for mm. that extra extra money on top of all that. Like when, you know, when mm-hmm. they talk about charging you 40 cents for sauce. This is, you know, this has been a very big debate for a number of years, really. Like, should you charge the extra or should you not? And I guess this begs the question, right? Like, what do you think, Celeste? Should businesses be able to charge the extra for these things or... I just think that there's certain things that should be included, mm. especially when you're paying a premium. Like if you've paid $500 for bedding and sheets and all of that stuff, <laughs> like chuck in the $3 bag. Yeah, exactly. You know, or, As a matter of good business. Well, totally. yeah, it's just good business. It's just good service. I definitely think so. Like, Because one of the ones that grinds my gears as a tea drinker is that they charge me the same as what they charge people for coffee and I get boiled water in a cup. <laughs> Yes. And a bag. It 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 has come to a point basically where when we go out as staff, for example, like Deanna has a bit of an issue actually buying me a tea because it's like paying the same as what it is for paying for a coffee, which sucks because I'm a tea drinker and that's what I enjoy, but it's just not you think for a cup of boiled water and a tea bag it should be like a dollar fifty, really. Yeah, well you know what? You should And even that's a premium. You know what I'd start doing? I'd bring my own tea bags in my purse. Well, they actually don't let you get just a cup of hot water because people do that. So if oh, you, really? Because on a number of occasions, as a singer, if I've been performing, I'll yep. ask for just a cup of hot water yeah. if my voice is having some issues. And they say, oh, sorry, we don't do that. You have to pay for it. And I'm like, oh, it's not to put a tea bag in. It's because, and this was at the Fringe. I actually had to say, I'm actually performing in one of the venues. And they were like, oh, in that case, that's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think, like, I no. have, I do take issue with paying, like, well, I mean, seldom do you get a coffee for $5. Like, let's say a coffee is, like, six, seven bucks, yeah. right? A tea should not be $5 or sometimes even five fifty, six dollars $6 for a tea. Like, it should be 4 to f- yeah, I'd say $4. I would even pay up to $4 and I'd be like, all right, you're paying a premium because of where you're having it and all the rest of it as well. But I'm um, like, you know what, for me personally, if I'm going to go to the effort of like paying five plus dollars for something, it's not going to be a bag with tea. Yeah, <laughs> I just love that you girls are spilling the tea about tea here. And the other thing that is really frustrating as well, like tomato sauce. Yep. I mean, look, I'm a business owner, right? So I get it, but on the same token... Um, there's this there's this thing in sales called like value added, yes. right? And so like with customers, for example, like the shop assistants in your case, in my personal opinion, should have I guess a certain amount like as a spend, yeah, where they can then bonus in a three dollar fifty bag. Correct. They just know like automatically on the register, I can mark that for free if the spend is over a certain number because it keeps the customer. It's like $3.50, but the customer feels like, oh, what a great store to shop with. And then it's good business and they keep coming back for more. It's kind of like online shopping. When you do online shopping and then you get like free, like a free gift or a free sample or whatever the case is. And they tell you that when you're going through checkout. So you're kind of like, oh, cool. All right. Well, that was worth it. You know what I mean? I feel like you get that a lot in online shopping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. A lot of my online purchases, I end up with like freebies. I might not use them or I might not want them, but it's, you know, value added. Value, value added services. Value added that's services. That's like when I worked at Macca's, I used to get like just chuck extra sauces in the bags. Well, I was just, we you know, that kind of Macca's. a person. You're that, you're, you're that kind of a, you're that kind of a generous person. I was. I wasn't stingy. Oh, I mean, I look, like the it. biggest thing f- I think right now is, is also the alter- alternative milk. 
right? Because I feel like it's surely, I mean, it's got to be more than 70% of the population that doesn't have dairy milk anymore. Like, I feel like if you sit in a coffee line, you hear everyone order every type of milk. Yeah. And so the coffee shops are, like, marking up a whole dollar for alternative milk. And today I ordered three coffees on Uber for Voice House, right, for the for the team, for me, Celeste, and, and Maria as well. Three coffees delivered on Uber, $29. How Ridiculous. much was the delivery fee on that? Like three bucks. Or oh something. wow! But because obviously Uber has a markup, therefore the coffees are more expensive. Jeez. But we're in and out of meetings, so we can't go and get them. So we have to get them delivered. Yeah. And then it's like you know seven fifty for the coffee plus the alternative milk charge. Wow. When are we going to abolish this? You no, know, I should. I know my barista listens to this show, so I should. I should ask her about this. Yes, we should. Mm. There you are. We'll get her yes. in the studio and talk to her about it one day. <laughs> So Celeste, how was your long weekend? You didn't you didn't get up too much, did you? No, look, not a whole lot. Like I said, it did go relatively quickly. Um, but I did spend a little bit of time, as I always tend to on a weekly basis. I did spend a little bit of time at the gym, right? Usual watering hot. Well, it's not a watering hot. <laughs> unless I'm drinking, that's usually that's usually my place. Unless I'm drinking hot. water from my bottle. <laughs> You are a, 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 a consistent frequenter of the gym. Yes. Frequ- a frequenter. 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 Oh, he's a consistent of frequenter. Of frequenter. frequenter. Um, so, you know, I did spend a little bit of time at the gym. And just spending time at the gym, and sometimes I'm there for longer periods, sometimes I'm only there for a short period. But when I'm there, it's funny because, like, I make an idiot of myself regularly when I'm at the gym. I do stupid stuff all the time. I've never seen you do that. But that's because I'm, I'm assuming you don't watch me work out. No, which would, I don't. You know. <laughs> I've, seen you do it, I've seen you do it outside the gym. just not the gym. Exactly. Yeah. Which would, of course, be preferable if people aren't watching me work out. You know, but I do stupid <laughs> stuff all the time. Like, I trip yeah. over on the treadmill. I can't tell you how many times I've, like, you know, tripped over my own feet and just kind of kept going like yeah that didn't happen um but one of the things and look first let me lead this by saying to anybody that chooses to go to the gym or work out in any way whether it be you know in a group style setting in an individual setting in sports whatever it is like good on you because i think that it's Mm. so important Mm -hmm. if you're able to do it that you do it and it's fantastic to see so many people going but it's funny because I've noticed lately that there's this one beautiful, lovely, lovely kind lady that is at the gym at about the same time as I am on most days. <laughs> and I feel like she's following me <laughs> around the gym. And, and look, she's probably not. Like, I, like she probably just does some of the same stuff that I do and we're just there at the same time. But I feel like she's like very frequently in the same area that I'm in, like next to me on the treadmill or next to me on the... <laughs> Uh, Stairmaster or wherever I am in the weights room. And she's a lovely lady, but... Do you know her? Have you no. like, spoken to her? No, I don't know her, but she seems nice. She's <laughs> So you don't actually know she's a lovely lady? No, I'm probably the one that comes <laughs> like, across... It could be horrid. A, I'm probably the one that comes across as a, as a rude BR to the H. Um, but, look, bless her soul, she... I don't know how to put this. <laughs> she is not of the... It doesn't have the best smell. <laughs> She's out of the your preferred odor. Yes, and I do, and it's so it's led me to think like. <laughs> She's following me around and it's getting to the point where I'm like, I have to like hold my breath and yep. like, and I'm like on the treadmill, you know, maybe for like half an hour and I'm like, <gasps> you know, and that's difficult when you're exercising because breathing is a huge part of like getting through <laughs> yes, the workout, right? Yeah. So I'm like, do, do you say something? I don't know. Like, so I thought I'd ask some advice. Like, oh. do you guys, do you say something or do you not? Do you mm. keep your mouth shut? Like, you know, don't bring it up. You know, keep your mouth shut, you, literally. I feel like you keep <laughs> your mouth shut. But then part of me like is like, hold on a second. I was here just minding my own business. Yeah. We are a celebrity in the stables of Radio Italia yeah. Uno now. She obviously, Celeste. maybe potentially. She don't know who I am. She, she uh, like, 
admires you and so she might be looking for some guidance and kind of doing it that way but look odors at the gym are tough because i mean sometimes <laughs> like yes like not only someone can walk past and you're like that's a bit full <laughs> on um so also what you can do what happens is you know when you go to like a new machine or a new area and the previous person's odor was oh. like so strong yeah. that as soon as you walk into like this little area you like get this massive like stench pungent smell. pungent smell and then like you step like five steps the other way and it's gone <laughs> and then you go back to like the area and it's there and yeah it makes it challenging i don't it know does. what to do in this situation what it's, would you do Aaron? it's hard some people bloody stink like and you just think well how do how do you address the situation like you could you could give them a hint next time that they're, they're at the machine mm. and you have a little roll on or a little spray with you Maybe just leave it next to the machine. <laughs> and, then when, and then when they go to workout, when they finish the workout, they see this little deodorant stick or whatever it is, and then that's the sign. Or is it appropriate to walk around with like a can of Glen 20? <laughs> no, I don't think that's appropriate. <laughs> well, we're, st- we're still living in <laughs> because the... Because the gym is going to be like, you don't work here. Why, why are you doing that? <laughs> you should... I mean, I think the people that work at the gym already think I'm weird. I don't know. Would you, would you approach it, yes or no? Oh, I don't like confrontation, so probably not. Yeah, oh, would I you? I think it's, it's such a touchy subject. Like I feel like it's not the type of thing that you no. that you can say to. No, but you can't. but it is like I don't know. On the flip side, I would prefer if someone told me that I smell because I'm always paranoid about that. Although I, you know, not that I want unsolicited advice, but I'd, I'd rather you tell me, mate, wash your pits. Do a test tomorrow when you go to the gym. Be like really erratic. You know, like run from one machine to the next, like, and see if she keeps up. And then you know if she's following you or not first, process of elimination. Yeah. Right? And if she does manage to follow you with all of that stuff and the smell, then well, maybe go for this the, is the so thing. it's really obvious. This is the thing. At my gym in the cardio room, there's like, I don't know, let's say 10 treadmills. And I might be one of like two or three people on a treadmill and she'll come to the one next to me. And I'm like, there's seven Others. Oh, oh, that's wait, I've got an even from. better idea. This is it. I found the solution. You don't shower for a couple of days. Keep her away. Like you really build up that odor. You yeah. know what I mean? And then eat lots of garlic. Her, and maybe she will no, start you not following you. Can't. You can't do it because you then know? I've got to deal with myself. I know, but it's like it's I'm already enough to deal with on well, a daily basis. Sacrifice. I don't need a smell on top of that. Well, if you don't want to emit a bad odor, just you know, just fart and then leave. That's what I was thinking as well. You could like really just do just that because then it doesn't stay on you. Oh, I, I don't know. It just stays in the vicinity. But it led me to think, you know, like there's so Pizza many, beans. there's so many different. We're we're such different beings in the gym. <laughs> so I wanted to ask our listeners, you know, of their funniest gym stories, mm-hmm. and mm. obviously you you too as well. I'm sure we'll hear from you after mm-hmm. the break. But I wanted to ask our listeners of. You know, they're funny gym moments or they're funny workout stories. And we got some great ones in. So you have to stick around. Join us after this quick break to hear some of these fabulous stories because you're going to have a good laugh. Welcome back. It's two brunettes and a gay. And if you've just joined us before the break, we were talking my time at the gym and how I have this lovely lady that I've actually never spoken to so she could very possibly be an absolute asshole (laughs) who follows me around the gym she probably doesn't I just feel like she does I don't know she's just on my radar she's on my my list yeah She's, Next on minute, she's knocking on the studio door. We're going to see her outside the window when we leave. <laughs> she's actually, she's like, can I be on the show? Um, and lovely lady, although I've never met her, but she, she unfortunately has a, um, an odor. And I was <laughs> asking Deanna and Aaron's advice on whether or not, like, whether or not you can say anything because I don't feel like you can. But you know, I thought I'll ask an outsider's opinion. I think the general consensus was no, you don't approach it. You know what I did just think of though? You'll know if she really is stalking you because she'll be listening to the show and tomorrow. She won't be next to you. I know. <laughs> she comes so maybe she doesn't know it's her. Maybe she doesn't know it's her. Maybe, maybe she yeah, thinks I'm talking her. about someone else. Yeah, true. Okay. But you know, we then were talking about different characters in the gym and you know the stories from the. I have made an idiot myself of myself so many times, and I know that you guys probably have too. I know some of our listeners have because we asked for some stories and we got some. But Aaron, tell me about your your biggest gym issue. It's you. <laughs> when I first started working out, 
a long time ago. I was going to a really small, tiny gym. It was in a rec centre. So I, I didn't really call it a gym. I called it a gym museum because the equipment was so old, <laughs> rusty, full of <laughs> dust. Um, but it was cheap. So I went in there and um, no, no crap. Every single time I'd go in and work out, there'd be this one gentleman who'd interrupt my session at least once or twice to tell me that I need to improve my technique. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, unsolicited that's advice. Unsolicited advice. And every single exercise I'd do, I'd be like paranoid thinking, am I doing this right? Am I second guessing myself? Yeah, and that. there's nothing worse than your PT telling you one thing and this other dickhead telling you something else. Oh, especially if you've got a PT that's already telling you what to do. Exactly. But I, but I got to the bottom of it. End up having sex with him. I was going to so, say, I knew where that was going as soon as you said that. <laughs> so he was using it as a way to hit on it you. Was, it was a way of hitting on me, yeah. And but it, uh, it kind of worked, yeah. Well, that's okay. interesting. Actually, it didn't kind of work. It really worked. It really worked. <laughs> that's actually interesting oh, yeah. because one of our... And he had good technique. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> one of our listeners' stories follows along those lines. So we, we will allow the listeners to remain anonymous, but... <laughs> Uh, this story, a fellow gym goer made a pass at me at the gym, complimenting me on my ass while I was working out. It wasn't well received, so I brushed him off. And as he walked away, he tripped and fell over one of the gym benches. And I couldn't help but think, karma. <laughs> do we feel like the gym? Like, do you can you hit on people at the gym? Totally. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come really? on. That's, that's where the gays get their I most bloody hookups. Hit, I think you gym. can hit on people anywhere. Really, I think it's just the way that you do it. Yeah, as long as they don't stink. I uh, look. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or you don't stink. Or I don't stink. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like for a lot of people at the gym, they're kind of in a vulnerable like state because for a lot of people, like working out might be something that they're like. Be- getting accustomed to or mm. adjusting to doing new things. And so then the mm. idea that someone's watching you or coming up to you, giving you advice on how you should yeah. be doing it or correcting your technique or saying, oh, you've got a nice ass, does that not make you like self-conscious and totally. be like, okay, are people actually watching what I'm doing? I was just here in my own zone, in my own space doing what I'm doing, but now I feel like I'm being watched. People are always going to do stuff like that because people are weird. Like, And some people don't – like our boundaries are all different, yeah. right? True. And so the person who knows how to read a room – will know the person that is open for a conversation and the person who is closed for a conversation. Like I deliberately make myself seem like I am like depressed morning person at the gym so no one wants to talk to me because I don't want to waste time with the conversation. I'm actually a really nice person and I like having conversations with people everywhere else but I just don't want my gym time to blow out, Yeah, mm. right? But there's always that odd person who doesn't seem to know how to read the freaking room Yeah, yeah. and they, they like start having a conversation with you and you're like, do I, do I, am I reciprocating this conversation? Yeah, but you're yeah. also like, do how you, do you not have a job? And Are also, you going somewhere also, after this? Yeah, I think a lot yeah. of people, because they're lonely and they want to socialise, which is wonderful, but you've got to learn where that's appropriate. So I think it really all comes down to does the person seem like they're open to being approached? How do you approach that person? No, don't go up and correct someone's technique because especially I know like a lot of males, females, anyone, any gender yep. can be really self-conscious. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially because I just started working out. So I, I was still second-guessing myself and what I was doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was one good. All right, so we got another couple. So this one, this is good. I had my gym pants on inside out for an entire workout and I didn't realise. <laughs> I think I've done that before. Really? <laughs> I reckon I've done that before. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I got another one. All right. I was in a group class and like most, there are different stations set up for different exercises. Where I was, we were doing weighted ball slams, but the oh, yeah. station over to me, whilst very similar, was not using weighted balls. <laughs> In the midst of my workout... You were waiting for me to laugh there. (laughs) In the midst of my workout, I picked up the wrong ball and slammed it to the ground. However, this ball bounced right back up at me and smacked me in the face, (gasps) almost knocking me out completely. Oh, that sucks. That sounds like something I would do 100% for sure. And then then you just try and recover like no one saw that. But you're like, no, that's it, I'm out. No, that's hilarious. (laughs) Because you know what's really funny as well? Like, it reminds me of the people that you see, like, doing the gym strut. You know, where they're walking from one side to the gym or the other, all confident, and then they, like, like, trip over something. (laughs) And and then they're, like, looking down and, you know, no one saw that, hopefully. But it's just really funny. All right. Well, here's one for you. What about, like, what about grunters? Oh. You know the people that they wait, they're lifting weights and they're like, (laughs) 
Yeah, well, look, it's fine, I, fine for the bedroom, right. not for the gym. <laughs> all right. Well, look, I mean, sometimes like I might like breathe quite heavy or whatever if I'm like doing something that's actually physically mm. strenuous, you know. So I'm like not compl- – like I think some of that's okay. But sometimes, yeah, it does sound a bit put on. Over the top, yeah. It sounds fake. Yeah. Oh, people of the gym, you got to love it. I'm Colourful sure everybody's characters. got some great gym stories. I will stories. let you know next week if she's still following me around. Because if she's yeah. not, perhaps she did listen. Maybe she's maybe she's tuned into the podcast or something and maybe she listens. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, if come you Come and are... say hello. If you do listen, come and say hello. Let's chat. We're never short on guests. <laughs> I don't think she likes you after this. Oh, I don't no, think she's going to want to chat. I'm sure she's a lovely, lovely lady. She but... just stinks. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. There was some news over the weekend. A government official in India has been suspended from his job after he ordered a water reservoir to be drained so he could retrieve his smartphone, which he had dropped while taking a selfie. (laughs) God. That's a lot. That's a lot. And uh, food inspector Rajesh Vishwas... Dropped his Samsung smartphone. Oh, so he's a food inspector? I thought he had something to do with the river or the reservoir. Yeah, so he, he dropped his smartphone in the Kokata Dam in central India last week um, and was taking a selfie on the job. Wait, so when you... Did he expect after draining it for the phone to work? Well, this, that's the thing, right? So he asked for the, the water to be drained because apparently uh, the phone had sensitive government data on it. But when they retrieved it, it was water damaged. Yeah, I was going to say it wouldn't yeah, work anyway. No, no, you can, no matter how much rice you put that thing, it's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> That's done. Oh. And so, but it's so not very right. I we say what else like, they found when they drained that. Oh, I'm sure imagine? the phone was not the only thing they found. Mm. But the amount of resources and money it took to, you know. Well, did he pull some strings with some friends? Do you know what I mean? Chuck them 50 bucks. Maybe. And just like get the whole day. So literally dream. chuck them 50 bucks to press some buttons. <laughs> chuck, chuck them 50 bucks to press the buttons inside joke there. Maybe one day we'll tell you all about it. <laughs> right? And uh, but, is that what happened? Like he got this whole thing drained? Yeah, pretty much the whole thing was drained just to find his smartphone. Now, that. He admitted to taking a selfie. He admitted to taking a selfie. See, I feel like if I was going to go to the effort of having an entire dam drained to find my phone, I'd be like, I was attacked by a raccoon. In the da- in and the it dam. came at me and I just threw it. I wouldn't be like, oh, I was taking a selfie. Like, yeah. why? I'd be more like my mum's at the bottom of the dam. Like, who does it for a phone? <laughs> oh, Do you know what damn. I mean? Yeah, no. I mean, you need a better, ex- like, I'm going to say smartphone, but dumb guy. Well, yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Well, the thing is, though, I mean, maybe when he, you know, was thinking that the phone was able to be saved, they were worried. He was worried that they were going to find this selfie on there. But I also question oh, how what led to the, you know, the incident. But I also question how no one stepped in and said, "Look, you're probably not going to get anything from the phone anyway." Like mm. they allowed it to be drained. Well, yeah. if if anyone, so I'm assuming it's like a work phone, and he's not allowed to take a selfie. On yeah. There. Well, with the sensitive government data. Okay, right. Doesn't but if the phone is backed up to the cloud in whatever way, shape or form, A, they're going to be able to find it anyway. And B, they're still not going to be able to get it from the water damaged phone itself. It'll come from the cloud. Yeah. Otherwise, it's gone forever. And was he like, was he, I don't know where he was standing in the in the reservoir. Like, where where was he to like drop it into a, you know. Yeah. He was obviously trying to water. do a selfie that made him look like he was like jumping Swimming in the water. Swimming or, or jumping or something. Something yeah. cool. How crazy though. Some The, the length some people would go to take a selfie oh, is yeah. absolutely chaotic. It is. Deanna, what's the furthest you've ever gone to take a selfie or to just take a photo in general? I mean, look, I have, like, sometimes I've spent, those around me will know, like I will sometimes go to quite an effort to get a photo if I'm in one of my periods of social media posting where I'm, like, trying to be good about it. I'll go to a massive length. David is taking a selfie right He's now. Taking <laughs> but first, While let me take a studio. selfie. We're actually in a selfie currently talking about selfies. <laughs> Woohoo! Taking a selfie on the show. No, I... Um, we won't have to, you know... I, it wasn't damn. me personally, right? But... Um, I was in Europe a few years ago with some people, and I'm not going to, you know, say no who names. it was or anything like that, but um, I, f- I realised after, like, this, the, it was a month-long trip with the same people, and I realised after the first week that this particular person who wanted to stop at, like, every little site along the way, you know, someone who's like, doesn't want to miss anything, like, you have to go to everything, 
All they wanted to do was drive four hours in one direction to take a selfie with the monument. And then, mm. then they were like, okay, cool, we're seeing, let's get in the car. Were you in the photos? Uh, well, I mean, I obviously took my own photos while I was there, but the, when we didn't actually even get to stop and enjoy the monument. But the person didn't even want to go and actually see or learn oh. anything about the history. Uh. They just wanted to post as many photos on Facebook as possible. Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook as possible. Pace with the monument. Pace yourself book. And so that person essentially, like, went all around Europe just to take selfies mm. with monuments and didn't even learn anything about it. What about you? I don't think I've ever gone to great lengths to take a selfie. However, I probably have gone to greater lengths to just take a normal photo, like with someone actually yeah. taking it. You know, mm. like, for example, if, you know, I've been on travel somewhere and it's kind of like, oh, look, maybe this would be a cool photo and you're like on a hike or uh, like, let's say Mosman Gorge when we were up in North Queensland, you know, you kind of go like onto the rocks and, you know, Take photos probably a little further out than what you should go. Don't mm. come for me, Mosman Gorge. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Like, you go further out on the rocks to do something that feels really unnatural to look natural. I yeah. know. Because it's all, <laughs> look, at the end of the day, it's all about the gram. Um, totally. But I, like, I've probably done that type of thing. I don't think I've ever gone like really far to take a selfie. Yeah. No. No. Well, no. Just not. Just photos. Get but it. Go on fire to, to get the shot. Yes, to I get feel the like shot. the shot. The shot. Although I know that, like, I have seen some people that go on like top of buildings, that like cranes, skyscrapers, things like that for for photos and selfies. And I think if you're risking your life for a photo, yeah. like, there's one thing to go out of your way to take a selfie, which is obviously annoying for anyone that's with you on those travels. But yeah. to actually risk your life for a selfie, that's on another level. I don't think any photo is worth that. No, definitely no, not. No, Unless you're a bad person. So do we think, like, is the selfie over? Should we kill off the selfie? No. What do you selfie dead. Think? No, I still love a good selfie. I, no, I, I, like, it's great. It's photo. Yeah. I'm with you because if I didn't take any selfies, Mark would never take photos of me. <laughs> so I'd have no... You wouldn't exist. No evidence of anything whatsoever. Oh, children will you not know what selfie. you look like. If that's exactly right. Well, I'm, I'm not going to have Your children. No, I'm a, no, I don't even have dogs. <laughs> But we put it out. We put it out to our listeners. We put a poll up today, and we wanted to hear from them whether it was time to kill off the selfie. Is the selfie dead? What, what, what is the conclusion? Here's the conclusion. So thirty percent said yes, seventy percent said no. The no's have it. Woohoo! So the vain listeners out there, we're going to keep, keep the, the selfie. Selfie. The selfie reigns again. Reigns supreme. All right. Well, we are going to be. Be, bra, blah, blah, blah. We, well, I don't actually. <laughs> we're going to be brat. We're, gonna be, we're <laughs> just going to go check our pace book and we'll be, we'll be brat. <laughs> we're going to learn how to speak during the break. And so hopefully I'll learn to speak in time for our interview that's coming up for you very soon. So stay tuned for more Two Brunettes and a Gay. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. It's Two Brunettes and a Gay, and we have a very special guest lined up for you. This is musical theatre performer, director, producer, arts educator, actor, musician, MC, and ex-ABC radio host. Please welcome Benjamin Mayo McKay. Woo! Welcome to the show, Benjamin. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. How are you all? Are we are wonderful. Fabulous. We are good. We're having a good show so far. To begin with... We're going to do something a little fun with you and we're going to all get in an elevator together if that's okay. All right, there is 30 seconds on the clock for you to give us your elevator pitch about who you are because I just read so many things that you do. So fill us in. Who is Benjamin? Ready, set, go. Well, I am uh, a creative professional. I am passionate about working on creative projects in whatever forms they take and also inspiring the next generation of creatives and especially getting work on stage by professionals who are being paid in South Australia for South Australians to see. Perfect. Ooh. That was that was very clean, Benjamin. Well done. Much cleaner Thank than you. Deanna's <laughs> well Much done. better than my <laughs> intro, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are here because uh, you are promoting your show Tick, Tick, Boom, which is set against the backdrop of 90s New York, and it tells mm-hmm. the story of an ins- aspiring composer named Jonathan Larson, whom Celeste and I are very familiar with because... We love friends, and I know a little bit of his backstory as well. Talented. But mm-hmm. tell us about Tick Tick Boom. What's the production about? 
Well, it started um, in the 90s as a show that John wrote to uh, to perform himself. Oh. So it was originally a musical that he was performing all over New York City uh, about his own life. So it is very autobiographical. It's entirely from sort of John's point of view. And then John tragically passed away uh, at the age of 35 before... Rent open before he became the acclaimed Tony uh, Pulitzer Prize winning mm. composer that, that he is. Um, so he never got to see his success. But what happened after he passed was that a lot of people, a lot of his friends and family, reread Tick Tick Boom and worked out how great it was and they expanded it slightly because uh, he'd performed it with a couple of friends and they turned those friends into characters in the show and they made it a full musical and it's been performed off Broadway and all over the world but never in South Australia there was a, a movie made with Andrew Garfield as well a few years ago on Netflix so John's legacy gets to live on very little um, was changed to facilitate it so it's still mostly John's original work it's all John's original music and lyrics no one touched anything there which I think is beautiful because he writes uh, if you've heard or seen Rent at all, you know how beautifully John composes music, and this still has that very musical theatre with an inspiration of rock uh, vibe that Rent has. And I think that because Tick, Tick, Boom was somewhat of a finished piece of theatre before John passed, unlike Rent, it might it might even be a little bit better as a show than Rent is. Now, I love Rent. I have a Rent tattoo. I've worked on Ooh, Rent. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're a fan, I, yes. I'm a fan. But I think that Tick, Tick, Boom, because John sort of got to finish it, um, at least in his iteration, and then people came in to just slightly tweak it, it's very much a completed show where Rent was still in its workshop stages and no one touched that at all. So I, I do think that Tick, Tick is a little bit more succinct, but it tells such a beautiful story about John's struggle and what he was hoping to achieve. And it's, it's at its heart, a musical about the human condition. And I think it's so... It's so powerful and so special, and I'm actually just really happy that someone gets to see it here in, in South Australia because it's been around since the 90s, and it's now 2023. No one's done this beautiful show here, despite all of John's fame, success, and the film. So I'm just I'm really excited that South Australian audiences and musical theatre fans can finally get to see it. So this is a South Australian premiere then for Tick, Tick, Boom. It is, yes. That's exciting. And I know that, like, if you're listening if you're listening, and you're not a musical theatre fan, you're probably yeah. like, what are we on about? But Rent is one of those, I guess, like cult classic yeah. musicals that either you absolutely love or you just don't get it. Mm. Um, mm. But if you listen to, like, the lyrics, because I just feel like his, his lyrics and his music were just, like, next level, and I think that's mm. what's so awesome about Jonathan Larson. Yeah. But, yeah, his story is, is a fascinating one as well, to think that he did such a production and never got to show it on well never got to see it like, mm, it's absolutely heartbreaking and i think while we don't quite get to rent uh in in tick tick boom he sort of doesn't he's not writing that where the show and right is there's there's that equal level of both joy and heartbreak throughout the show because he's working on another musical called suspiria which never actually uh ended up being performed but there is one song from suspiria in tick tick boom which uh, obviously he wrote, but it was the only thing musically added after his death. And it is one of the most beautiful songs. It's called Come to Your Senses. And hearing it, and especially hearing it with a live live band, is is sensational. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm so glad that this music has a chance to live on. Well, it sounds amazing, and it's definitely one that everyone needs to get down and go and see by the sounds of things, especially because it's a South Australian premiere, so we need to get out there and support that. Now, before we let you go, we are introducing a new segment that we like to call Rapid Fire. I mean, that's not a very, you know, exciting name, but it's Rapid Fire. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. we're going to put two minutes on the clock, Benjamin, and we are going mm -hmm. to rapid fire ask you some questions and we want to see your answers, whatever comes to your mind first. Are you up for the mm -hmm. challenge? Always. We must frame that they are very random questions. Very, very random. random. Yeah. This is for us to um, get to know you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm ready. All right, let's put two minutes on the clock. David, here we go. All right. Question number one. What was the last song you listened to? Uh, Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. Oh, good choice. Ooh, good choice. Last Google search. Oh, um, <laughs> I think it was actually our website address. <laughs> <laughs> sell, sell, sell. I love it. Who do you text the most? Uh, my best friend, Mel. Oh, hi, Mel. Hi, Mel, if you're listening. Red wine or white wine? 
red. Oh, oh, good choice, good choice. What did you have for breakfast? Zucchini slice. Oh, oh yum. okay. Yeah. Best one-worded insult. <laughs> You're on community radio. Nobhead. No, knobhead. No, <laughs> that's great. If we can't say that on community radio, we just did. I love it. <laughs> now, what's your Hogwarts house? Ravenclaw. Oh, okay. Nice. Very nice. Summer or winter? Winter. Oh, mm. yeah. Would you rather travel to the past or travel to the future? The past. Okay. Guilty pleasure? Uh, Master Chef. Oh, oh, a bit of a chef. Nice one. Worst celebrity encounter? John Travolta. <gasps> no! 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 Yeah, no, we need, we need to, to stop the clock. Yeah, the we clock. need to stop, stop the, the clock. clock. All right, stop that clock, David. The, we need to know more. Uh, I have worked um, a lot of a lot of interview programs, yeah. a lot of conventions, um, interviewing people. I, I love I love that part of my job and career. Yeah. Uh, and he was just a less than pleasant person oh. who you may or may not have been able to make eye contact with backstage. Oh, oh no, not one of those. You know they are. You know, this, might, this might devastate you as well to know, but we actually had someone in here who worked with Idina Menzel, which obviously is a big red mm. character, and he was saying that she was very similar backstage. That's unfortunate. I think the ego just gets to their heads at a, at a certain point when they get too famous. I know. Mm. I feel like all my celebrity dreams are being crushed by doing this show and interviewing people that have worked with my favourite so celebrities. So funny, though, that it's John Travolta and Idina Menzel, Adele Dezine. Yeah, Adele Dezine. <laughs> 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 yes, it is. They must be connected in a higher level. All right, everybody, Tick, Tick, Boom premi- previews on the 27th of June and runs for a strictly limited season from the 27th to July 1st at the Queen's Theatre in Adelaide. Tickets start at $45 and they are on sale now from the lottheatre.au. Please get behind the production. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Benjamin. It was a pleasure to meet you and best of luck with the show. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun chatting. Welcome back to the show and thank you for choosing Gay on Tuesday yeah, and joining you. us tonight. And if you're listening to the podcast, thank you for just choosing Gay on any day of the week. All right, we're going to do a variation of the moment that everyone's been waiting for this week, Shit Advice. We're going to do, we're going to change it up this week. Yeah. We're not going to the webs of Reddit to get our questions this week. Mm. Instead, we're going to Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to do something a little different with some questions that were sent to an actual advised columnist. So these are questions that were sent to an advised columnist in, I can't say it, columnist. Did you, no, Did you say advised? Advised columnist. <laughs> Oh, an advice. I don't know. This is a great thing. You create a new word each show. I love it. I do. Yes, it's, it's good. Advice. Shit advice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You can just do it yourself, right? <laughs> I love it. Anyway. Advice <sighs> columnist. Columnist. Yep. Um, 11 hilarious questions sent into an advised columnist. I'm not going to say that any more times because it's, it's doing my head in. These are real questions that people ask. And um, we figured that our shit doctors, shit Celeste and shit Aaron. Needed some shit questions. Now, these, these questions, they don't, they don't, I don't feel like, some, I feel like some of these are statements, I'm going to be honest. But, you know, they have question marks at the end. So just respond with what you think that you would give these people advice. So this is like our rapid fire, basically. Yeah, a lot of it's kind of like this is going to be more like a rapid fire this one, right? And um because I feel like a lot of these could be just one-worded answers like yes or no, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Okay. So so this was Abby. Shoot this your is shit. dear Abby, but we're going to say dear shit doctors. A couple of women moved in across the hall from me. One is middle-aged gym one is a middle-aged gym teacher and the other is a social worker in her mid-20s. I've never seen a man go into or leave their apartment. Do you think they could be Lebanese? <laughs> Not Lebanese, Blanche. Lesbian. <laughs> that is fantastic. They could be both. They yep. might be both. What if she genuinely meant, do you think they're Lebanese? And she's like, no, I don't mind if they're lesbian, but are they Lebanese? Because <laughs> I enjoy the food. I was wondering if they could cook me some dinner sometime. What do you guys think? Are they Lebanese? I'm not. 
Does it matter? <laughs> As, li- this- as, as Lebanese as a Lebanese cucumber. That's fantastic. Okay, yeah, who that asked that like question? Uh, it doesn't say. We okay. don't know. This is the, this is this is. And we never I will need to have a conversation with we that person. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that feels Actually, like that, that was a question from the nineties. <laughs> that a question yeah. from Deanna. You know how she gets words wrong. Yeah, that <laughs> was <laughs> just me. Mispronounced. Yeah, I use spell check. Um, <laughs> dear Abby. What can I do about all the sex, nudity, foul language, and violence on my VCR? Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Press the eject button. <laughs> <laughs> if it's on a VCR, I'm assuming it's on a tape she put in there. <laughs> yeah. mm, it could be. Yeah. Okay. Dear Abby, I've suspected that my husband has been fooling around. When confronted with the evidence, he denied everything and said it would never happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a contradiction there. <laughs> I think that. Um, well, I, I don't. <laughs> what are you supposed to say? She got the answer. Like, are you supposed to write back and be like, "Your aunt, you got the answer." Like, read between the lines. I don't know. Like, Abby's got her plate full. Abby, Abby has some challenging questions. Look, I'm not going to lie, but you guys are the shit doctors, so I feel like you should be. Delivering some profound wisdom here. Okay, so my profound wisdom would be if he has said that it'll never happen again, just, I don't know, ask him when and where so you can make sure it doesn't. <laughs> Maybe. That's a good, that's good. I like that. Well, just get your own cheating arrangement. You go Yeah, just you be like, girl. okay, so when and where will you not be cheating on me next? Dear Abby, I've joined the Navy to see the world. <laughs> now I've seen it. How do I get out? <laughs> Navy see, seal the world? Mm. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Don't you just do something crazy and see if you get discha- honor- dishonorable, dishonorable discharge? discharge. <laughs> Dear Abby, I was married to Bill for three months oh, and I didn't know he drank until one night he came home sober. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a real question because whoever wrote that is extremely smart. I had to think about that for a good four seconds before I was like, "What is this person talking about?" That's sobriety, fantastic. sobriety leaves a lot to be desired. Let me tell you. There you go. I feel like that was. I don't know if that was necessarily shit advice. It was more like shit opinions. It was just yeah. shit questions. We, <laughs> we, shit questions. Look, we try to be shit because we're naturally shit, but just yeah. Yeah. that was shit questions. But I, my favorite has to be the Lebanese one. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was. That was it was good. So the answer is is they could be both. But on that note, if you're still listening at this point in the show and you have any <laughs> questions that you'd like to ask us, whether they be your own or, you know, friend of a friend type stuff, we would love to get some actual shit advice questions from our listeners yeah. because we would love to give you our shittest advice possible yeah. and hopefully help you on your way, help you on your life's journey. With our yes. shit advice. Definitely hit us up on socials, Facebook, Instagram, send us a DM if you've got a shit advice question. Something that's going on in your life, you can remain completely anonymous. We're not going to mention your name, right? But if you want some some funny answers from our shit doctors. Send us an email. Send us an email. Hello at two brunettes and a gay dot com. <coughs> <laughs> Hello at two brunettes and a gay dot com. <laughs> <laughs> They've lost Two it now. Oh, day. Wow. <laughs> See, it's, See it's if it a, wasn't for me, the show would be funny. It's been a long, long weekend. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. <laughs> a long, long Thanks, weekend. Thanks, Charlie. If you're listening live, Happy head to your major day. podcasting platforms. Make sure you give us a listen, download our episodes, and, and give us a five-star rating if you haven't already because that will really help our show. Mm-hmm. And if you're listening on the podcast, you can tune into Radio Italia Uno 87.6 FM every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Adelaide time if you want to hear us live. And, of course, please follow us on social media so that you can watch us post reels of this show. Now have a a fabulous week and we'll see you next next Tuesday. Tuesday. Ciao, Adelaide. It's your favourite trio, two brunettes and a gay, here to remind you to join us every Tuesday at 5pm for your drive home. Expect the best beats, sassiest segments and plenty of piping hot tea from the weekly rumour mill. And let's be honest, we know us Italians love a good gossip. So tune in at 5pm every Tuesday right here on your number one station, Radio Italia Uno, 87.6 FM. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.